in our lives over the care of God. And we're just so grateful that we can do that. Life is full of decisions and choices every day. One thing God never does is take away our free will choices. You have to make a decision to turn your will and your life over to Him. I want us to go to... Romans chapter 14. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be talking about three to choose. We're gonna be in Deuteronomy, but I wanna go there, share some scripture with you, and I wanna share something else with you. Romans 14. You hold your finger there. And then share something. Page 1450. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Page lady. Yeah. yeah. Okay, hold your finger there. I want to share something with you. In step three, okay, we truly turn our will, our way, and our entire life over to God. Addiction and all. Making this decision seems simple. After all, didn't we commit our lives to Christ? Why wouldn't we want to turn over a shameful addiction after all the painful consequences that it caused? But this is more than salvation and more than asking God to take away our consequences. In step three, we intentionally release our hopes, dreams, choices, addiction, compulsions, and relationships and give God control over it all. Not so easy. Easier said than done, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is a, a not a, not a one-time commitment, and it is also the step that opens the door to a lifelong endeavor. We practice it with ever-increasing willingness and trust. We grow into this decision. In approaching the decision directed by step three, we are challenged to trust God on a deeper level than ever before. Ever before. Trusting God with everything in our lives may be difficult because of our experiences from childhood to the present in which people have repeatedly broken our trust. <coughs> Life has trained us to be skeptical and weary to take charge of situations because we don't trust anyone. Anybody in here got trust issues? <laughs> we sure do. And they're all dictated from our past experiences. So people say, I don't live in my past. But if you still have trust issues, you are. Yeah. Just a fact. We may have learned to make life work on our own power because no one around us can be trusted to protect, help, and nurture us. Mm -hmm. As a result, we can make the mistake of generalizing that lack of trust to God, thinking that he expects us to take care of ourselves, at least in some parts of our lives and issues. Confronting our lack of trust in God's care it's critical to working the 12 steps in our lives from step 4 through step 12. To have a successful recovery, we must learn to completely surrender ourselves and our will. As Jesus said, the one who loses his own life for Jesus' sake will find it. Big amen there. Amen. Turning over our addictions and dependencies is definitely like losing our lives. This is our comfort entertainment, relief, and reward, like a best friend who shares life with us. Letting go of what seems impossible, lonely, scary, and not a lot of fun. And then, to let go, turn over my will and all my life, I'll have no life left, we cry. <laughs> it takes my whole life, right? The obstacles of the spiritual realm are self-will and grandiosity have held us in the clutches of addiction. They have created the illusion that we are in control. The message and task of step three is to face the fact that our control is not real. We may have thought we had control, but God has the ultimate authority and power. When we accept this, then our dependence upon him for the solution to our addiction and sin nature and any other life problem becomes clearer and clearer. Put a big amen there. Amen. So, I don't know about you, but I know 
even Jesus says we know that we can't trust people. Mm. But God is not people. We can trust God because He loves us and only wants what's best for us. So we have to understand the way God works and to make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to Him might not be the way we'd like it to be. He might have to cause some pain in our lives to make us get on our knees and surrender. Because a lot of us have a lot of pride and we still think there's area of our, areas of our lives that we still in control of. That we don't think there's a problem there, so why do I going to give it to God? But that's not the case. We have to give it all to God. Because one thing, it's like a snowball effect. When you, when, you, when you take control of one thing, then you take control of another thing, then you try to take control of another thing. When you give complete control over to God, it is the most free thing you can do in your life. Amen. But it takes time. Not everybody, listen, you're not going to trust somebody you don't know. So if you don't get to know God through reading his word and studying the Bible, you're not going to trust him with everything in your life. It's impossible because you don't know him well enough to do that. So when you get to know him, though, see, when you believe in Jesus, you have him. But that's a whole different animal to getting to know him. Yeah. Having him and knowing him are two different things. Yeah. You can have him by believing in him, but in order to recover, you have to get to know him and know his ways, and then you have to get to know your ways. And so you have to make your ways his ways. So if you don't know his ways, how can you make your ways his ways? <laughs> oh, you're going to try to make your ways Oh, he's going to, oh, you're going to try to make your ways his ways. That's you're going to try to make God in your image. Yeah. And thinking, I can do it this way, God's going to do it this way. It doesn't work that way. He created you, you didn't create him. Right. You can't create a God. He created you. And he knows us better than us. The Bible says, the human heart is wicked and deceitful. Now, does he say, just some people's hearts? No, he said the human heart. Everybody's heart is wicked and deceitful. Now people say, oh, I don't think I'm wicked. I don't think I'm deceitful. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. <laughs> well, who are you comparing yourself to? We can always look, see, do, be doing better than someone else on the side of us. But when you compare yourself to Jesus, we're all in the same boat. Thought, word, and deed, we fail. Like I said, if we could open up everybody's heart and throw it on the table, we'd be running away from each other. <laughs> You know the real use behind closed doors anyway. And so when you really want to change, that's when you examine your life, when you're home behind closed doors. And all that ugliness that comes out of you, that's the real you. But the spiritual growth is when it doesn't matter. You put your heart on the table and you're in the same way. Which is integrity. God wants to give us his heart, right? Which is integrity is, I'm John here, I'm John at home, I'm John on the road. I'm John at Dunkin' Donuts. I'm John in traffic. Now, does that happen overnight? Absolutely not. This is a process that's going to take the rest of our lives to get to. But there's a goal. The goal <clears throat> is to become Christ-like. To become like Jesus. So in what? Everything we think, everything we say, and we do. And the only way that's going to happen is if what? We admit that we can't do it in our own power. And second step, come to believe that there's a power greater than us that can restore us and do that for us. And then step three, we have to make a decision, a conscious decision, to turn our will and our life over to the care of that power. Can I get an amen here? Amen. So if you don't do that, you're going to be under control of your own power. So I know every morning I make that decision. Lord, take my will in my life and guide me. I know that you're going in front of me. So when anything that comes up in front of me, you put it there. So if I can treat everybody like Jesus, you put it in front of me, then I know that I'm growing. Because God put it there to change me to act like Jesus. So once you understand that, I go to work for Jesus. I get on the, out of the driveway for Jesus. I get in traffic for Jesus. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> but some days are better than others. See, here's the thing. The goal is to become Christ-like. I'm not perfect, but I'm getting perfected. I'm maturing in my faith and understanding His ways are better than mine. And that's where his grace and mercy is, to keep me going in the right direction. It's not to keep me sinning, it's to help me stop. Yeah. Jesus didn't have to die for me to keep sinning. I did a good job without him. He died so I could stop sinning. 
And he gave me the power, the grace, and the mercy to do that. So now I have no more excuses. Because I, if I really don't, none of us have to sin anymore if we don't want to. Yeah. It's a choice. It's a choice. We have to make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to his care. Oh, right, is that really Romans 14? Yeah. Okay. I actually read this yesterday in church. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember? Mm -hmm. Because there's something here. There's a decision involved. In verse 7. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. Amen. If we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the <laughs> Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. So why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For the scriptures say, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me, and every tongue will declare allegiance to God, or declare praise to God. And he's quoting Isaiah 49, verse 18 right there, by the way. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. Now here it is right here. Decide or make a decision instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Can I get an amen here? That's a decision you have to make. Decide to do it. All right, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter um, 30. All of us have strengths and weaknesses. Some people are strong in some areas, some people are weak. Page 255. Thank you. You're welcome. Paul was talking about food offered to idols. Some people felt convicted not to eat it because they figured they were sacrificing it to demons. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to eat that. And Paul said, that, it has no power. You could, you could eat it. It's not a big deal. But some people get convicted not to. He said, well, then don't eat it. Then. If you do that, you're, you're what? You're you're, you're causing someone else to stumble yes. because they believe that it's not right to do it so you don't do it mm -hmm. if they believe it's not right. You may think there's nothing wrong with it but keep that between yourself and God. There's a lot of, th and we could put a lot of other things into that area. Yes. A lot of other things. Yes. But I'm not going to go there. You run the gamut with addictions, drugs, drinking, shopping, whatever it might be. Some people are weak, some people are strong. Some, some person's weak in a certain area, you don't do it in front of them. Because you love them. All right. Is everybody there? Yes. Free to choose. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're on step 3. I'm going to read. Page 255. Page 255. Yep. We made a decision to turn our wills and our lives over to the care of God. Everyone has a life or death decision to make. We have all been created with the supreme privilege of free will, the ability to choose. Even when we are in a, the bondage of our addictions, we still have choices confronting us. When we are in recovery, we face the nagging lure of falling back into our addictions. The freedom to choose brings with it the burden of the consequences of our choices. These choices affect our life in the lives of our children. Free will is our blessing and our responsibility. God spoke through Moses saying, Now listen, today I've given you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and keep His commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in His ways. If you do this, you will live and the Lord your God will bless you. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, then I warn you that you will certainly be destroyed. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, 
and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. We're going to read this. Although we may feel out of control with respect to our addictions and our sin nature, we can choose to set our heart in the direction of life, which I was just talking about. We can choose to love God and begin to follow His program. Now, didn't God give the nation Israel a choice yeah. between life and death? What did they choose? Death. death. They choose death. As a matter of fact, they still choose death today. Yeah. Until they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, God is not going to protect them. That's why they're in such turmoil right now. All that I pray that Israel would accept Jesus as their Savior so we can rebuild that nation again. Until they do, they're under God's curse. That's the problem. Anyone who rejects Jesus is under the curse. Yeah. Or anybody who dis disobeys him is under the curse, for that matter. That's what it tells us in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read um, Deuteronomy chapter 30. <coughs> okay. We're going to read the whole chapter. Yeah. A call to return to the Lord. So today's an awesome day to make a choice to return to the Lord and make a decision to turn your life and get back over to Him. In the future, when you experience all the blessings and curses I have listed for you, and when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, take heart all these instructions. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with all your heart and all your soul, all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has scattered you. Even though you are banished to the ends of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back again. The Lord your God will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors, and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. The Lord your God will change your heart. There it is. In the hearts of all your descendants, so that you will love him with all your heart and soul. And so you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate and persecute you. Then you will again obey the Lord and keep all his commands that I have given you today. The Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. There's a promise right here. He will give you many children and numerous livestock, and he will cause your fields to produce abundant harvest. For the Lord will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors. The Lord your God will delight in you if you obey his voice, let's hear what it says, listen to this. Look at verse 10. The Lord your God will delight in you if you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in this book of instruction. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Now this is a decision you have to make. Now all of us turn away from God at times. We decide to make, make life our own way. But he said, <clears throat> if you come back to me with all your heart and you make that decision... I will restore you again Amen. to the, your form of the way you were before, or even better. Amen. But you have to make that decision and let him do it. He promised that he would do it. But if you don't, you're under the curse. And you're what? Always be, have troubles and problems in your life. Can I get an amen here? Amen. The choice of life or death. Here it is right here. Listen. This command I'm giving you today is not to do. Now listen. The Bible, everybody thinks it's difficult. It says right here. Listen to what it's saying. This command I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you to understand. And it is not beyond your reach. So that means it's achievable. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask, who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey it? It is not kept beyond the sea so far away you must ask, who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey. No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart, so you can obey it. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice. 
between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations. Now, how the heck are we going to do that? Oh, it says it right here. <laughs> huh? By walking in his ways. Not just hearing it, by living his ways. You see, there's a difference there. You can do it by what? Walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Here's a Bible book for you, okay? <laughs> but, if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Now, how do we make that choice? The Bible's going to tell us how to make the choice. Anybody want to, want to know how to do it? Yeah. Okay, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you ready now? Yeah. Yes. No more excuses now, because I'm going to bring it all to the light for you. If the choice is yours from here on in, you can make this choice by loving, loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. Amen. Everybody wants to unlock, well, what's the purpose of my life? It's right here. The key to your life is to what? Love God, obey God, and commit yourself firmly to Him. Amen. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says he'll guarantee us that we'll be in the promised land. And you know the promised land is a state of mind, right? It's not, it's not outward, it's inward. The promised land is what? All the fruits of the Spirit manifest. Peace, joy, patience, tolerance, self-control, gentleness. That's guaranteed now, if you do it that way. Now, does everybody do it that way? Well, we try. We try. And we fall back. But what? We, it says, if you turn and worship other gods, see, people think that another god is like some statue. No, another god would, could be your car. Another god could be your, your kids. Another god can be um, people. Another god can be your church. That could be all different things. That's what an idol is. You can be, put your kids in front of God. You can put your car in front of God. You can put your house in front of God. You can put everything else in front of God. That becomes an idol. You're worshiping the created over the creator. Now, what's, the Bible says, I must come first. Over your kids, over your car, over your money, over everything. And if you do that, everything else will fall into place and your family will be blessed. How many of us actually do that, though? I don't know about you, but I made that decision a long time ago. And I'll tell you what. My biological family actually is in turmoil and suffering, but I know if I put God first, eventually it's going to come full circle and fall into place. Yeah. Other than that, it won't. But people get jealous down in the world when you put God first. Yeah. They get jealous. They say, no, i got to put God first. Like, Who are you trying to please? People or God. Amen. I'm here. To, I please God. I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please God. And that's why I speak truth in this church. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not here to please you. I'm here to kill your flesh. <laughs> Amen. The flesh killer what? The flesh killer makes people. Oh, I don't like that message. <laughs> I don't like that message. Why? Because people still want to do some of them things, right? And the Bible convicts them when I bring it out. So I was he talking about me? No, that was God speaking. <laughs> it wasn't me. Trust me, it wasn't me. 
<laughs> and if it hits you between the eyes, it's good either way because God's trying to wake you up to see something that you don't see. Like that, like that verse, don't shoot the messenger. If anything, you get mad at God. And that'd be the worst mistake you could make. You get mad at God. How many times do we get mad at God? Be honest. Why'd you do that, Lord? Why, why, why? Why my life gonna be like this? <laughs> Where's that game? Instead of saying backwards. You want God on your side, not You want God you. on your side, right? Yeah. Nobody blames the devil. No, no. I do. I do it to myself. He's the yeah. accuser. The devil's the accuser of the brother. Right. Yeah. So when you stop picking on other people, the devil's inside you. Yes. When you stop talking about other people, that's the devil inside yeah, you. Yeah. When you start glorifying yourself, thinking you're better than someone else, or I don't need this, then that's the devil. Yeah. Who doesn't need recovery? We're all in recovery from sin. Mm -hmm. It's absolute denial that you don't need it. Yeah. Everybody needs it. Everybody that's born into this world is in sin. And that all of us need to recover from it to become like Christ. So yeah. we're in recovery from sin. So if you want to be anywhere in the program, we're sin anonymous. <laughs> Run the gamut. Because what people do is they get hold of one thing. They get they get in, they get they get hold of one thing, and then they jump into another one. So I don't do this anymore, but now I do this. Instead of it, it's all across the board. Sin anonymous. Who Sex, the drugs, the booze, the family, the people, that is to that. We're all sinners. Or you might get, well, I'm not like them. Well, that's what the Pharisee said to the tax collector, right? I'm not like him. And Jesus said, you're going to hell. He's going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Who are you to judge? Amen. How many judges we got in the room tonight? There's only one judge. There's only one judge. Oh, I've been judged plenty of times, I can tell. Judge <laughs> Judge Judy. <laughs> I'll tell you one one thing about that judge. She tells us straight up. She doesn't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> she tells you the way it is. Yeah, she says it right up. I don't believe you. Look, yeah. look at me, she said. Look at me. Don't talk down. Look at me. Look at me. She tells it right there because he knows. You know when you're lying, you're looking down. You're not getting scared at something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she is. But back in the Old Testament, God granted people them judges. And what did they say? No, we want a king, like all the other nations. Then he said, and um, Samuel told him, they're going to oppress you and rule over you and ruin your family and take your children. We don't care. We want one anyway. And we've been suffering ever since because of that. How can people fix people? How can sinners fix sinners? Can't. So they put somebody in office to try to fix the problem when they're part of it. <laughs> yeah, they're the worst ones. Blindly to the whole Exactly. The only one that can fix it is Jesus. So if they slap the Bible on the, on the, on the White House on the table and say, this is what we go by, which America Amen. was founded on, yes. the country was prospering Amen. back then. And God was blessing America because we did things His way. Amen. Now he's cursing us because we decide to do things the devil's way mm -hmm. and make God the way we want. Oh, I can be who I want to be. Yeah. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And look at the mess we're in now. Because mm -hmm. we have nobody to govern over us. Nope. Mm -hmm. Right? Lawlessness. And history repeats itself, the Bible says. Back in the Old Testament, when nations decided not to follow God, what happened? They got conquered, conquered by other nations. By other nations. Mm. Let me tell you something. America is in trouble big time. Mm -hmm. Unless they turn to God. Thank God, I pray for our country all the time. And for the sake of his believers and his chosen ones, he's keeping his hand on this nation. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Time's going to come when he pulls his hand back. And, and, the, and the end times are going to come. And it's going to be nasty in this country. Matter of fact, we might be so oppressed, they might just come and take your home, martial law, wow. everything come back into place again. You might get killed for reading your Bible. Yep. It's coming. That's why people have to get prepared for that evil day 
they come in. Christians are all prosperity. Yes, oh, yeah, right. Obi Dubby, we're blessed. Just love everybody. Yeah. That's it. When they can come in and just drop a bomb yeah. and boom, yeah. do done. done. Twenty thousand people <laughs> dead in one day, yeah. like yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Are we going to be ready? This church is going to be ready. Mm. We're going to go next door. Yeah, to Cooper's house. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to fall off shelter next door. You just go in there. If everybody remembers what a fall off shelter is, right? <laughs> yeah. In case of a nuclear attack, yes. they go in the fall off shelter. Yes. They have them in the schools. Yeah. They had them in the schools. What? You might hear them siren someday, yes. right? But you know the, when, the, when there's a um, war comes, that yeah. sound? Yeah. 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 People think it's a joke, right? If the Bible says everybody's going to be peace and prosperity, everybody's going to be dancing and getting married and love, and then, boom, it's going to come. Without, even, without warning. Yeah. Scary. Fail to prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare to fail. Prepare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why every time the doors of the church are open, I'm here. Because I know I need to get ready for this. It's going to get ugly. Yes. It's going to get ugly. And a lot of people are going to turn from the faith. Yeah. 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 And if you're not strongly rooted in the Word of God, you're going to follow seducing spirits and doctrines of demons and walk away from God. The only one that can protect you. So, the choice is yours. I just gave you one today, right? All right, we're going to answer some questions. Thank you. So make a